A new study finds that eating animal protein does not increase your risk for dying of all causes, dying from heart disease, or dying from cancer. I think this is really important. The title of this paper is Animal and Plant Protein Usual Intakes Are Not Adversely Associated with All-Cause Cardiovascular Disease or Cancer-Related Mortality Risk. This was an analysis of the NHANES data set that we've talked about. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, the largest and longest going nutrition epidemiological study here in the U.S. And so there were 15,000 subjects that were tracked for 20 years in this data set. And what they found essentially is meat eaters were, did not have a statistically significant increased risk of dying from heart disease or getting cancer, cancer mortality, or all-cause mortality. So I think this is important because we've heard over and over again that the best way to lower your risk of heart disease is to eat a plant-based diet. And animal protein, what does it do? It's that evil stuff that increases insulin like growth factor one and causes cancerous cells to proliferate and so forth. Well, now I recognize that epidemiological studies are really hard to suss out the direction of causality. There's a lot of confounding variables that are tried, you know, investigators try to adjust for these things. So it's, it's hard to totally figure this out, but because epidemiological studies have been you know, used to say that red meat causes cancer, we have to look at this one and say, well, actually it doesn't. And so the investigators go on to say that they use data from the NHANES data set collected between 1988 and 1994 to examine associations between animal and plant protein usual intakes in IGF-1 concentrations with mortality from all causes, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. There was about 15,000 subjects in this data set and there was 3,843 actual events between you know, the late 80s to 2006, so almost uh, 20 years here. Uh, they go on to say that usual intakes for protein were estimated using multivariate and, uh, hazard ratio models, uh, and they were fit for mortality types, all cause cancer or heart disease, right? How did people die and from which condition with protein intake measures, as well as IGF-1 concentrations. And they say there were no associations between animal protein intake or plant protein intake for all-cause mortality. Similar results were seen for cardiovascular mortality in animal protein and plant protein. There was an inverse association between cancer mortality and animal protein. Let me go back and, and make sure we're all on the same page. They say there was an inverse association between cancer mortality and animal protein intake, but no relationship with plant protein. What does that mean? How do we translate that into lay speak? The more protein people ate, there was a lower risk of cancer mortality, which flies in the face of all the conventional wisdom that we've heard from our supposed experts um, uh, in the mainstream media saying that, you know, animal protein rots your colon, it raises IGF-1, it does all these things. Well, they just, they just said um, that there was actually a 20% lower risk. So I think that's interesting. They go also want to say, we found no association between concentrations of IGF-1 for all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, or cancer mortality. Our results remain unchanged when the sample was separated into younger and older cohorts. Our data do not support the thesis that source-specific protein intake is associated with greater mortality risk. However, animal protein may be mildly protective for cancer mortality. Whoa. I'm not making this up, guys. It says right here, animal protein may be mildly protective for cancer mortality. Mortality risk was not associated with circulating IGF-1 in any group. Now, we're going to go on and talk about what this data means and look more granularly at this. But first, I want to thank you for being here. Hopefully, you're enjoying and learning something from this video. If you are, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Now, since we're talking about protein, I just want to remind you one nutrient that is found in animal protein, particularly red meat, is called creatine. You've heard a lot about creatine. It really helps with the cellular energy production. We're hearing so much more about creatine being protective for the brain, for the heart, and for your eyes as well. It turns out that these energetically demanding tissues, muscle, brain, heart, eyes, but what is important for you to recognize is not all creatine is the same. A lot of companies sell creatine source in China. It's at only an 84% material, and you don't know what else is in there. And why it's really important to not take creatine source from China is 
Creatine is synthesized. This is not a natural molecule like berberine that is derived from a plant. All creatine, all supplemental creatine is synthesized and you don't know what residual solvents or caustic agents are in the material from China. And that's why I love the German-made creatine. And this video is brought to you by Myoscience that only sources the European-made creatine, whether it's Crea Vitalis or Crea Pure, micronized versus unmicronized. You have two different options based upon your tolerance of creatine. So I would highly suggest seeing what other people are saying over at myoscience.com. I'll put links in the description below for the world's purest micronized creatine. This is a relatively new product and the feedback is amazing for higher dosages such as sleep deprivation or jet lag or cognitive improvements and beyond. Creatine can be a tool that can help you. Of course, it's found in an omnivorous style diet, but many people are not eating enough red meat, which is primarily where creatine is sourced from. A lot of folks are having tilapia and chicken and tuna and things like that. Not great sources of creatine. So if you're not eating a lot of red meat, you may benefit from supplementing with myoscience. European synthesized creatine. It's again, some of the purest creatine on planet earth. Most companies sadly are just sourcing the cheap stuff from China, which I don't recommend. So you can click the link in the description below and use the code podcast at checkout over at myoscience.com. Now getting back to the study, I think it's really important that we understand a proposed mechanism. Like if we're going to say that red meat or animal protein causes cancer, what's the mechanism? How does purportedly eating red meat or re eating animal protein cause cancer? Well, a lot of people have been speculating that, well, animal foods increase insulin-like growth factor one, and that causes neoplastic cells to form and so forth. But it turns out that, yeah, IGF-1 chronically elevated could be problematic from a cancer risk standpoint, but this study found no consistent or reliable statistical associations with IGF-1 levels and all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and cancer mortality. And protein intake, there was no correlation, right? So I think that's important to consider. They also found, as I mentioned earlier, an inverse correlation with animal protein intake and cancer risk. And so I think this is important. Uh, looking at table two, these are the hazard ratios for usual animal and protein intake and all-cause cardiovascular and cancer mortality. And what you see here, is really no association between animal protein versus plant protein intake on all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality. But what you do see here lower in table two is the inverse association. Then the p-value is 0.029. Um, so it is statistically significant. And you do see a reduced risk of cancer mortality with animal protein intake. Now you don't see that with plant protein intake. You see an increased risk of cancer mortality when uh, associated with plant protein intake. Now, this doesn't mean that plant proteins cause cancer, right? We, we don't know from epidemiological studies the direction of causality. They're not designed to determine causality. They just so show associations, and these associations have multiple confounding variables and factors that impact that association. So I'm not here saying that plant protein causes cancer. There could be some association, but further evidence is needed and more analysis is needed there. But as you can see here from table three, there's no consistent association with cancer or cardiovascular or all-cause mortality with IGF-1 levels. Okay, so that's important um, to consider. So as the investigators conclude. Our analysis revealed no significant adverse associations between dietary protein from either plant or animal origin and all-cause and cardiovascular-related mortality. We also did not observe any association between total protein intake, sy systemic IGF-1 concentrations, and cancer-related mortality. We observed a small but significant protective effect of animal protein intake and cancer mortality. The current findings contradict some previously published findings that have linked animal protein intake to increased mortality risk. We also did not find beneficial mortality outcomes with increasing plant protein consumption, contrasting with previous reports. Nonetheless, our results are not at odds with our other analysis that reported no association between plant protein intake and mortality or a small statistically significant positive association between protein intake and mortality. Okay. They go on and talk about other, other studies and, and, and so forth. And they say, in conclusion, using NHANES linked mortality data through 2006, we report no significant associations between dietary protein intake and mortality risk, whether all-cause cardiovascular or cancer-related 
We noted a small reduction in cancer mortality risk with increasing animal protein intake. We found no associations between IGF-1 and mortality. These relationships were unmodified regardless of age. Okay, so I think you can be comfortable knowing that you can have a steak tonight and not have to worry that you're going to get colon cancer, right? Um, so kind of makes sense. You know, humans have been omnivores for, for all of humanity. There was no such thing as a soy burger or a plant-based burger 400 years ago. Um, and so I think it's important just to recognize that everything in moderation, including moderation. So I think most people should be comfortable eating an omnivorous style diet and do just fine. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. My friends, as always, appreciate you tuning all the way to the very end and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.